Hello. Can I speak to John Askew? Have you managed to work out how your equipment works? It's all working. Even did the wee clappies. Wow, that's good news. Are you happy? Define happy. I sensed your inner rage stirring up when my mic wasn't working. Well, you know, it's sort of, so are we going to do this? Yes, we are. I'll call you back in five minutes. Okay, brilliant. And you'll be set up, ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And then it didn't work. <laughs> no, then just call me back like an hour later if you want. <laughs> yeah, it'll be five minutes. Yeah. The good news is it's actually working. That's very good news. I'd rather make sure than imagine we did this whole thing and it just didn't work. That would be a fucking nightmare. Anyway, what's happening over there, Johnny boy? You good? Well, much the same as everyone else in the country, just in complete lockdown. Um... Working hard in the studio, making music and sort of... Uh, Spending some much needed time alone. Well, alone is not... Actually, you're not alone. No, I'm not alone at all. You've got alone time. I've got pitch battle family time. But actually, no, most of the time it's, it's, it's lovely. But sometimes the screaming just gets unbearable. But when that happens, I just get my dog and go out for long walks. It's day by day right now, isn't it? Where are we now? It's now the 9th of April. Um, I still think the worst is yet to come. In the UK? I'd say worldwide. What do you think is going to happen? Yesterday was the worst day so far that the UK has had and I just think it's going to get progressively worse. Yeah. Let's say it peaks in end of May. Yeah. If it peaks at the end of May, then surely we need six weeks with no cases confirmed before people are allowed out. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've even heard rumors that you know even like big gatherings for obviously for like gigs or whatever else you know until there's even a vaccine we could be facing that it's like a whole industry just fucked i mean look i know everyone in the world is having to deal with this it's not just the entertainment and and, and restaurant and nightclub and bar and whatever you call it hospitality industry it's everyone is is suffering i mean the only positive well not positive well yeah i guess it is positive for people who are in music you know music isn't gonna die as such you know like as a dj you only have your overheads of yourself or i guess if you had like premises and staff and a bit other types of business like they could be truly finished yeah i mean fuck we've lost our office now due to this we've lost the the office now i'm sat in my studio now and i've got all the fucking seven merchandise here so uh it's it's tricky back to basics back to basics working out what's important what's not yeah you know i think when when we get through this on the other side the world is going to be a very different place and the landscape of global touring and shit is going to be very different yeah it's hard to know what's going to happen like you know even when it does clear up yeah i mean who knows things could pick themselves up quickly or not it's speculation it's hard to know for definite what will happen yeah you know things could just kick off did you get the letter through the door from uh, 10 downing street <laughs> yeah i got it i got it yesterday yeah yeah basically don't don't step foot outside your door well it's just i don't you know the british government are just i don't know i think they fucked this up in what sense look i know that everybody's doing their bit and i'm not certainly not criticizing but really lockdown should have been lockdown but when you say to the whole country please stay at home Unless you have to go to work, unless you absolutely cannot work from home, you have to go to work to do, you know, you can't do that because everyone will go, well, I have to go to work because I have to earn fucking money to pay my bills. So <laughs> lockdown in the context of, of stopping a virus spreading ought to be fucking everyone. And for them to just say, you know, everybody stay at home except people who absolutely have to go to work. Yeah, they should just be cancelled. Everyone in the country has to pay bills. You should have just said, everybody stay at home. Yeah, like no exceptions, just total military operation. What's going to happen at the end of this? When they say, all right, guys, you can now go out. Yeah. Okay, well, the whole country's going to go nuts. And it's the same for everywhere else. They're going to be out partying. They're going to be with each other. And all it takes is two or three cases. And it kicks off. Of COVID-19 to be in the middle of that. And we'll be, it'll be the second wave. It'll, it'll be back to where it is now. Even worse, whatever. Do you think there could be a second wave? Oh, fuck yeah. Inevitably. <laughs> I mean, how could there not? I mean, you can't say f f in any certainty at any stage that it's stamped out. Now hospitals might say right cases coming in are, are less the beds that we've got set aside in icu units are no longer occupied confirmed cases are not coming through as much but let's say 
people who have COVID-19 should either be at home self-isolating, dealing with it on their own, yeah. or in extreme cases, in hospital, on a ventilator or whatever, right? Those, those are the two options. But there's probably a fuckload of people out there who have got it who don't know they've got it. Yeah, of course. I mean, it, it takes about two weeks sometimes for people to even know. Yeah, that guy that came back who lived in Brighton, he was the super carrier or super spreader. He never actually got any symptoms. He was just carrying it, but he didn't have any symptoms. I just don't know how they could ever get to a stage unless every single person in the country was tested, not only tested to see if they had it, but to test it to see whether they have had it mm -hmm. until that test has been done with every single person in the country. And not to mention every person in the country, if you're going to open up the borders and allow people to start coming in and out of Heathrow, then you almost need to test every person who comes into Heathrow as well. Yeah, there's still a lot of flights going in and out now, though, isn't there? Like I saw in America, like some, I saw like a map with showed like f um, flight paths or like f flights coming in. But what well, coming into America? I think it was New York actually, which is badly hit. But there's fucking loads of flights going in and out of that. Coming into America or traveling around within America? Mm, I'm actually, I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if the flights you're looking at are internal. Yeah, maybe, maybe. But then I guess, you know, with New York, I think New York's quite badly hit. I mean, if you're coming in from other places, which isn't as bad, you know, it's still spreading it around a massive country, mm. you know. Mm. But I guess times like this, it's uncertain. So all you have to do is do what you can control yourself and try and turn anything into some kind of positive. Yeah. I mean, the full on ejaculation of music. And live streams is incredible, plentiful, I would say. It's almost it's almost like too much. I was going to do some live streams myself, but I got all my kit home, my decks and shit, and my mix mixer is completely fucked. It's broken. Only one channel works. Oh no! It was fucked anyway. I mean, it's it's got to be at least twenty years old. But did you get a new one? There's supposed to be a new one coming either today or tomorrow. It said before the weekend. All right, I was going to say you could have borrowed mine, but you won't need it no um yeah i don't know it's live there's live streams every other minute constant live streams it's endless it's just trying to come up with like your own sort of slant on putting your message out musically not just doing the same sort of thing what could the slant be i'm standing in my house either in the kitchen studio or fucking wherever and I'm playing records. No, no, of course. I mean, well, for me, when I did started this bonker thing, it's more like, it's still obviously sounds that I'm into now, but it's a lot of like older stuff and different bits and pieces, you know, mm. not just here is me on my decks playing what you guys come to see me play all the time or whatever. Mm. It's just older tracks, which meant stuff to me and just different, just different types of stuff all meshed together. Just that's what I tried to do. Yeah. But I've actually quite enjoyed it. It's been good. It's been an outlet each week of just, you know, going through older tracks and going through different music. And I've been changing my DJ setup over the tractor. So I've sort of been like learning that live as I've been recording and streaming it both together, which has been enjoyable for me. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, actually. I, I think when this is over, I'm going to I'm in the back of my studio where the, that big grey sofa is. I'm going to get that taken out and I'm going to get a big thing there made for decks and bring all my vinyl here as well, set up my Technics as well. I'd be well up for that. And just have it all here, basically. Did you keep all your vinyls? No, no, I only have a fraction of my... I'd say from my full vinyl collection, I probably kept about 10%. The rest of it I sold on eBay. Right. Once you've moved house twice yeah. with that number of vinyl, you're like, fuck me, I'm never doing that again. But I kept all the techno. Okay. So, for example, I have all of the first 25 to 30 drum code releases. And actually, the first 25 drum code releases, I've got duplicate of every single one, 1 to 25. Brilliant. Actually, drum code 1 wasn't actually released on drum code. It was released on Planet Rhythm. It was faster techno then, was it, in the early one? Yeah, yeah, it's like 140. Bangers. All of those are in a record box at my parents' house in cellophane, still unopened. Nice. You know, I'd like to get all the vinyl back here, because then also with my studio here, now I'm only using this studio because I've lost the other one. Yeah. I'll be able to just be in here sampling off records and shit constantly. I'm quite looking forward to it. It's just a shame that we, we'd have this social distancing. Otherwise, I'd have a carpenter in here fucking building this shit pronto. Yeah, getting it done. Yeah. I mean, I still, I kept all my vinyls, but for 
that reason you said when you're moving because I've moved house quite a lot each and every one of them are stored in my mum and dad's mm. but they I think they're selling their house this year so they're all going to get <laughs> they're going to tell me to come and get your fucking records we, we don't want them so but it'll be good to get I'm actually at the point I want to get them all back and go through them all for like samples and loops and just yeah why not you've got techniques at your parents no I, I don't have techniques but I'm going to get some yeah See, I just want a really good Dex setup. Yeah. So that I can mix whenever I want. Definitely. Um, I think, like, you know, back in the day, like, not even back in the day, not that long ago, I was always on Dex and always before gigs, and then obviously moving around and, you know, more digital stuff came in. It was like the Dex sort of took a bit of a back seat, but I'm, I've brought, I'm bringing those back now and getting back into those habits. Yeah. Even, like, recently, like, I was talking to quite a few other artists about doing like a skullduggery stream and the thing across the board was hardly anyone has decks i know you know what? i've been trying to arrange a seven live stream and nobody has decks no i mean will atkinson and i and tapio orcadia are the only ones who have decks but sean doesn't have them simon doesn't have them but you know people are like well how can you be a dj and not have decks well if you're touring if you're doing eight gigs a month the gigs themselves become practice your time to but I do, I do think you know, like having them at home and just I don't know. It's it brought it brought back old really good habits for me recently, and I'm enjoying it. Explain your setup because you don't actually have decks. You don't have decks at the moment, but my new setup is going to be running Tractor Three with one controller and two two or three CDJs. And mm -hmm. um, so basically. Because I've always been a hands-on DJ, so I don't want to lose the actual DJ aspect, you know, just staring at the screen, so to speak. But at the moment, because I don't have CDJs here, and mm. um, when I'm doing my recordings, like on the controller, it's just the same as like it's basically me pushing play on a CDJ, but I'm pushing play on the controller and then I'm mixing as normal through. So does the controller have pitch controls? Yeah, it does, yeah. It's got like a little pitch strip thing. But is everything just locked? You can lock it if you want. And I have been obviously locking it more because I don't have the, the CDJs at the minute. Yeah. But when I'm doing my live gigs, it won't be as locked. But I'll be honest with you, years ago I used to use Serato and I loved it. But getting my head into Tractor, which has taken quite a lot of months, it's just opened up a whole new can of worms for me in a good way. It's just, I'm so much more, you know, just on the fly. All my stuff's there, it's organized, it's just snappy. And it's good and it's, a, it's an addition to DJing rather than just totally changing. Mm. But it takes a bit of time to get your head around it, but I'm absolutely loving it. So other than your bunker sessions, what, what else have you been doing? during this period just been spending a lot more time a lot more time in the studio working on trying to finish a couple of new singles remix for you guys or for you for seven and looking into new sounds like coming up with new sounds for my tracks and samples and i've been doing quite a few reworks and just running the label and that's basically it mm. i'm finding trying to be a bit more creative just coming up with new stuff basically but yeah that's it yeah it's a good time for making music. Yeah, it really is. You know, I've taken over getting all the labels, Victims Helpline 7 and Deep in Thought, you know, the schedules properly mapped out to the end of the year and as many releases finished, every single thing in the asset folder. Yeah. Master WAVs, paperwork, the editorial, the label copy, the artwork, all the different artwork aspects. The pains in the balls. <laughs> Do you know what? I have to say, it is a pain in the balls, but I have actually really enjoyed it. And now I'm super ahead on all this stuff on all three labels yeah we have completely full release schedules till the end of the year and on the two labels uh, sorry on, on all three labels we've delivered all the releases until the end of august awesome and i reckon by the end of this period of lockdown hopefully i, I should have delivered all the releases through possibly to october i would have thought see even being in that place i mean that just frees up so much in your own head it does i have to say i'm, I'm loving this period of being at home yeah and it's not necessarily because of a fear of covid19 coronavirus whatever you want to call it it's not a fear of that but there is part of me that is sort of thinking, do I really want to go back to the intensely busy level of touring that, that was going on the last couple of years? Yeah. Um, I think really what I would like to do is maximum two weekends of gigs a month, maximum, so that I have a solid two weekends a month at home is really what it needs to be moving forward. 
It needs to be. You can't run everything else. You can't do everything. It's too much. You're pulled too many directions. And also, what a lot of people overlook, and if this period at home has, has taught or shown us, is, is quite how expensive it, it, it is to be a touring DJ. You can have a fee put on the table by a promoter that looks really great, but once everything's been taken out, the cost of your flight, because all promoters pay, pay landed fees, you take away the cost of your flight, you take away the booking agent's fee, you take away the tax obligation, you take away all this shit, and quite often at the end of it, the, the fee's not great. And right now, while we're at home, okay, we're not going anywhere, we're not spending money on anything other than the bills for this house and uh, food. That's all we're spending money on. And really, there's no, there's no money coming in at the moment, so we're sort of just scraping by. Do you feel like it's kind of freeing, in a way? Because you're just managing the basics, and that's okay? I'm just loving being at home. I'm spending long periods of one-on-one -on -one time with my wife and kids yeah. that perhaps I haven't done for fucking years. Yeah. Because I will come home, the first day when you get back for a long tour, you're knackered, and then you got to go straight into the studio and, and, and just be focused, and now, you know, okay, yes, I have these long days in the studio, but occasionally I'll just say, fuck it, I'll take a day off today. I'll do something one-on-one -on -one with my kids all day long. And it's just, it's not like just normal holidays. It's, there's a level of absolute chilled, laid-back freedom. <laughs> I know, freedom is a weird word to use when we're all locked inside, imprisoned in our houses. No, but it's, it's freedom from your own habits of working. Freedom from the rat race and the onslaught of, I, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm definitely going to come back from this with a new structure. I don't want to be... Ragged? <laughs> no. About a week ago when all this shit kicked off and we're all stuck at home, I felt kind of free going into the studio because I was just going in here and getting on with my stuff. And it was only because I knew outside the whole world had stopped anyway. So then I said to myself, well... You know, you can create that time in your own head, in your own space, in your own studio at any time, no matter what else is going on out there. Mm. You know, as long as you channel yourself into that and don't feel that we're fucking running on this uphill treadmill all the time. Mm. You know, it's like it's, it never ends. And the way we are, we're go, 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 go. Then, as you say, you know, you're having time now to be present with your missus and your kids and whatever. It's hard to be present sometimes when you're in that rat race which your head is engaged in. Yeah. It's being able to separate that and take yourself away from it when you choose to do that and be creative and do it the way you want to do it. I think you're right. Just want to restructure things a little bit because doing fuck loads of touring and essentially most of the money that you're making from touring, the overwhelming majority of money you make from touring goes into the cost of touring goes into the flights and the booking agent fucking hmrc yeah you know it's just like really i mean it's demotivating you know there's there's a big difference between touring as david getter in a private jet and earning millions and millions from every month through to our level of touring where okay you can make you can make really great money but it's grueling it's taxing mentally as well and physically yeah and then obviously if you pile on, you know, other commitments at home, trying to be creative, running labels, bills. Yeah. You just have to be mentally sort of on it, but also give yourself those breaks, which you're talking about, so it balances this out, so that you are moving forward and being happy at the same time. Yeah. I wonder what's going to happen to the to the scene in general after this. Trance scene? Well, I wouldn't say just the trance scene, I'd say clubbing in general. I think it's going to be a bit nervous for a while. I think the number of people going out will probably go up. Everyone will desperately need to go out and let off steam. That's great though. Yeah, that will be great. I had this conversation with someone the other day, you know, every DJ is going to be looking for gigs. There's only a certain number of clubs, but it's always like that anyway. Yeah, but they're not they're not packing it into three months, are they? We're talk you're talking about three months, four months of gigs cancelled, and then the whole world wants to reschedule them for, th for this three month period at the end of the year. You've got all the big festival promoters and stuff who, are, who have f been handed a great big financial kick in the balls. Yeah. And they need to try and claw that back because they've endured massive costs. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm very interested to see how it pans out. And also, you've got to remember, there's, there's a lot of clubs that will go under because there are clubs who depend on people coming in, paying their entrance fee, paying for drinks, paying, you know, to be able to pay the rent, 
to be able to pay their own costs. And now they've, they've been empty. I bet you a lot of the fucking coolest clubs go under. They won't even be open. There's so many variables. I mean, it's hard to say, but it could do that or it could just slip back into place and start kicking off. I hope so. I mean, it's a resilient scene and something good has to come out of this. But, you know, at least at the end of the day, the one thing that is fucking superb and, and will always be there and is perpetually wonderful is the music itself. Yeah. And there should be a lot of good stuff coming after this. Yeah. You're working all hard on a lot of releases, but, you know, you're going to be putting them out and you can't go and play them. True. But it's important that people do keep putting them out because a lot of people are now putting their albums back, putting their singles back, pushing it back, pushing it back because they only want to put it out at a time when they've got videos of them playing it and crowds going nuts to back up the promo for that release. Yeah. And I can kind of understand that. But at the same time, I think it's still really important to keep the inbox healthy with incoming fresh new music yeah okay you, you can't necessarily play it now i mean fuck my new single mezcal i played my last gig was the the eight hour set in argentina and i played an old version of the track there and you know what happened with it yeah someone called me out and said oh that's you it's plagiarism because the riff sounds the same as someone else's so i changed it to a new riff and i've not had a chance to play that record out it's gutting but when i come back just because that track's been out, it's still going to be fresh for me, and I'm still going to be playing it at every single gig. For months. From here till I'm dead. So, you know, what, four or five months? <laughs> <laughs> five months till you're pushing up the daisies. Yeah, COVID-19, mate. The tracks don't go to waste if they're tracks which are obviously... Well, all your tracks should be the tracks which you're going to play consistently for many, many months. Yeah, you just have to get over that thing of, you know... Is it worth putting them out? But it is. Is it worth putting them out? Because you've got to think about the rest of the trans community, the clubbers, the heartbeat of the community. They're all out there yeah. desperately wanting new music and releasing new music or people like Brian Carney doing mixes containing nothing but unreleased, really, really exclusive material. Shit like that is invaluable to the health of the scene. It keeps it interesting. Otherwise, it's just going to be stagnant. It keeps everyone erect, ready for full-blown sex when it starts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do you reckon when this is all over, everyone's just going to go out and go fucking banana? Hang on. One second, one second, one second. Hello. Thanks very much. Cheers. What earth is this? Oh, it's sanitizing gel, Greg. Oh, is it? Is that to rub on your balls? No, it means I can disinfect the phone when I finish talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh. um, so, yeah, I haven't seen another human in about three weeks now. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah. That's good. <laughs> it's good for the rest of the world. <laughs> Gives them a break, Greg, you know what I mean? I wonder what, have you heard an update on what's going on with Boris Johnson? Is he all right now? I think he, he's okay, isn't he? He's still, he's still stable, no? Is he through this shit? I haven't watched the news today. You saw those videos of him. Well, first thing was there was a video of him saying, you know, he went into an ICU ward where there were loads of people ill with COVID-19 and he shook all of their hands. Is that true? Well, yeah, well, apparently. There's also that video of him like a week or two ago just in a small convenience store going in to buy booze or something, I don't know. And then he gets recognised by people and people are trying to get photos with him and then he goes outside and gets on his bike. <laughs> doing really well on your own lockdown but there again if i was in his situation i'd be hitting the booze fucking hard <laughs> speaking of which have you been doing that yeah i have all your mates around the world want a party on either zoom or house party so you know he's thursday seven o'clock and then you you got four or five mates all on at the same time and you sat there chatting almost like you're all in the same room Obviously, you, no one can hear each other because they're all talking at the same time. And then, you know, it'll progress from a couple of beers to maybe a few shots and then and then just necking everything. And then suddenly your three hour phone call finishes and you're annihilated. <laughs> you see people more than you do when it's, this isn't going on. I think it's great. It's, it's brought a lot of people closer together and... The, I, the funny thing is, I think a lot of families will come out of this really, really close. Yeah. But also a lot of people will come out of this and fucking divorce. <laughs> It'll be game over. <laughs> I was thinking, you know, we're, we're so fortunate to live out here in the countryside. But can you imagine if you lived, uh, if let's say you were a single parent with four 
teenage kids at home living at the top living at the top of a high-rise fucking block of apartments in 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 london or wherever can you imagine fuck that kids who are you know it's summer outside it's summer and the kids can't go out and yet i bet you the teenage teenagers all over the place they're not going to stick to this curfew are they no they got they got fucking vital drinking and fingering to do they got to get out there (laughs) by the way can i just say don't do that if you're watching this. I'm not saying do do that. I'm saying don't do it. Your health and the, and not dying is more important than getting pissed and fingering. <laughs> Both of those things will be there for you when this shit's finished. <laughs> you hope so anyway. <laughs> I was talking about dad last week. He was saying, fuck, you count yourself lucky. You're not going home to a wife you hate and kids that you hate. <laughs> not that he was saying that about his own wife, of course. <laughs> This is a big thing in the news at the moment is women who are the subject of domestic abuse. Oh, my God. Imagine how fucking awful it is for them. Traditionally, their husband might get up and go to work and at least they've got the whole day without the bastard there. (sighs) But now he's getting up. He's starting drinking at 11 a.m. and he's fucking shit faced and on her case immediately. Yeah, that's just... There was a thing on Radio 4 this this a few days ago, and it was talking about how that situation is just out of hand escalating. That's a horror story, man. Yeah, it's a horror story. <sighs> Fuck, I mean, I saw pictures of even places over in Thailand, you know, people who are, like, self-isolating, and, like, they're fucking, like, sleeping in bathrooms and toilets and shit, like, they're in shoe boxes. Yeah. We are just very, very fortunate to be in this situation, geographically. Just in many ways, man. Are you still going out running every day? I'll be honest with you, I've really slacked off on my exercise. I just, I don't know, I was just getting up and I just wanted to be in the studio and I just couldn't be fucked exercising. But I have been getting back on it the last few days. I've definitely been feeling better for it. Yeah, Nita's been uh, making me do daily wads, which is it's been good actually I've done four now I think and then I, st- I go running a little bit but also long walks with the dogs as well I have to man I have to get fresh air I've been more so like see walking and just like because usually when I'm training like not even when I'm training like I train regularly all the time but it's usually intense and I love it but just in this period I'm just like fuck it but getting out and getting a bit of fresh air and just you know keeping things moving it's it- Hang on one second, let me just... Can you move out of here, please? Okay. Sorry, chaos. Just feel like, I don't know, my motivation levels to, like, stay fit or be fit are just low now. <laughs> I found a new hill to sprint up last week, which is really exciting. You're so close to being able to be in Savanac Forest. That's just glorious. But because you'll have half of Marlborough going up there walking, you got to you got to get up and get in there by 6am and try and get a five six mile run done yeah that's a good idea that's the other thing i just can't be fucked (laughs) (laughs) so i can't be fucked to exercise i don't really care about my fitness at the moment and when i wake up in the morning at about six i just look at the clock and go nah fuck that anyway it's uh easter friday tomorrow good friday tomorrow so um are you gonna have the day off are you going to do an Easter egg hunt for yourself on Sunday? <laughs> God. Actually, I got an Easter egg delivered to me today, so I'm going to hide it. Hide it and... Hide it, find it, eat it. Hide it, but then see if you can find it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good place to draw this. Yeah, rap fans, rap fans it up. Yeah, episode three, Transportal. <clears throat> keep it real, keep it safe. Keep it real. And keep it safe and whatever you do stay the fuck at home because we really really want to try and at least have some of our summer back if this whole summer goes past and we're staring at it from inside out then it will be a disaster i don't want to go right you can loud out now and it's fucking winter incidentally oh brilliant <laughs> I, I don't mind because i'm gonna leave the country if that happens i won't be back you won't be back no where are you gonna go somewhere hot yeah just fucking i'm out the door i feel you man listen uh, keep it real greg downey yeah i'm just um gonna go and have some much needed time to myself so say hi to the family and enjoy yourselves basically all right all right mate let's let's catch up again uh, in a couple of days all right lots of love take care mate cheers mate see you later mate bye